Hi guys, so today we are going to be talking about a renal transplant case, okay? And today Rob is our patient. My name is Dr. Vishal Kumar. For those of you who don't know, welcome to the channel Keen Medic. And I am the founder of the channel and also keenmedic.com. I'm a doctor based in the UK. You can find out all about me on the channel and also the website. So this video is part of a Think Like a Medical Registrar series where you are going to be learning core principles and ideas on a lot of common things that you see as a medical registrar, which will help you in your MRCP PACES exam, which is why this also comes under the title of MRCP PACES today. OK, so let's get started then. So in this video, we are going to go through a scenario. OK, and then we are going to move on to uh, thinking about what is wrong with the patient in the scenario and the key considerations you need to have about renal transplants basically the key considerations we're then going to talk about who to contact uh, in this sort of situation and then going to move to on to monitoring especially for renal transplants Finally, the scenario review with an explanation of what you should do in this particular scenario. So stay with me until the end because you're going to be learning a lot in this video. OK, so here's the scenario. So Rob is a 62 year old man who has just been brought into A&E overnight. So you're the medical registrar on call overnight. OK, and he's been brought in overnight due to abdominal pain. Mm, OK, him. Sorry about this. It should be him. I don't know what I was typing there. Uh, he had a renal transplant three years ago due to diabetic nephropathy and his past medical history includes hypertension, diabetes with retinopathy and neuropathy. OK, and he is currently taking all of these meds, remipril, metformin, glyclozide. So he's got type 2 diabetes, as you can see from these medications. Uh, and he is also on insulin, it looks like, for his diabetes, which makes sense because, you know, he's got clearly very, uh, he's had bad control over the years, hasn't he? Because uh, it has gone on to affect the retina, neuropathy, nephropathy. So he is on insulin, which makes sense. Um, and he is on tacrolimus and prednisolone. So tacrolimus would be for the renal transplant and presumably prednisolone would also be for the renal transplant. OK, now a lot of patients don't always uh, stay on steroids long term, but some do in the rare instance. And it looks like he is on steroids uh, for his transplant okay all right so what do we have then his observations are temperature of 37 6 heart rate of 127 beats per minute and it's regular blood pressure of 128 over 76 respiratory rate is 26 and saturations of 95 percent on air so it looks like he's tachycardic and he's tachypneic so let's talk about the treatment first that a &E have given. They've given him some IV comoxiclav, okay, and also sepsis, sepsis 6 has been started. So sepsis 6, for those of you who don't know, is a bundle uh, of sepsis treatment, okay, uh, comprised of six different elements. You can Google this um, for your own reference. It basically means that um, you are giving intravenous fluids, IV antibiotics and oxygen where required, and you are taking from them uh, blood cultures, lactate on a venous gas sample, and also measuring urine output. That's what sepsis 6 means, okay? And uh, bloods have been taken and sent. a and &E have done all of this for you. And when you arrive, they uh, show you the venous blood gas, uh, which shows this so the pH is 7.26 PO2 is 7.6 PCO2 is 8.6 now bear in mind this is the venous blood gas okay so we'll we uh, are not going to worry too much about this just yet bicarb is uh, 12 lactate is 2.6 and glucose is 28 okay right so uh, what do we think is going on what are the differentials then First of all, sepsis very much is a differential here, okay? So he fulfills criteria for a uh, septic patient. He's tachycardic, tachypneic, etc., And he probably is immunosuppressed as well because of all the medications that he's taking, the immunosuppressants, right? But could it be a failing transplant uh, due to perhaps an infective or a vascular cause? You know, if there is uh, some kind of clot um, in the vessels that go or that go to the kidneys, uh, then the 
transplant kidney i mean okay so then that could cause a failing transplant um, and if a transplant is failing you know you can be tachycardic tachypnea that's possible so we don't know not we don't know just yet what might be going on all right so let's see you arrive there and because you have seen the venous blood gas and you know that he's on steroids and you know he's diabetic you ask for ketones and ketones come back as 6.5 so, so ketones are elevated okay so this changes things slightly doesn't it because we have got a man um, who is diabetic uh, he is in metabolic acidosis with raised uh, glucose and raised ketones so this fulfills criteria for diabetic ketoacidosis so dka falls very much in the differentials list so that was the scenario we'll come back to the scenario at the end of the video okay uh, we'll talk about the management of that at the end let's talk about the key considerations for every single patient that you should have who is coming in with a transplant okay especially a renal transplant the first is is it functioning and we'll go through how to measure this in a minute the second is are the complications of the immunosuppression that is being used okay so two main principles for every single transplant are is it functioning and are there any complications okay and you should employ this for every patient with every transplant okay and that will help you a lot so is it functioning how are we gonna how are we gonna check this in a renal transplant we're gonna examine them first okay so we'll do of course we do all the fancy tests and investigations as doctors but first and foremost we start off with history then we do examination and then we do the investigations don't we so we are, we're proceeding in that order so let's examine them what are we gonna look for fluid status is important because if they're overloaded uh, with no background of you know heart failure for instance then this could be an indicator for a failing transplant they may well be uh, needing acute re uh, acute renal replacement therapy dialysis okay tenderness over the transplant is also an indicator for uh, rejection or infection Another thing you should be looking at is urine output. Urine output is absolutely vital. It is absolutely key for any renal patient full stop, okay? Any renal patient, including patients with renal transplant, you need to have a very clear indicator of what their urine output is, okay? So especially in this patient, I think catheterizing him is a very good idea because that will give you an accurate um, indicator of what their urine output is all right so these are the three things that you should be doing when examining them in a patient with a transplant okay okay so is it functioning we've done the examination bit let's talk about some of the investigations then first and foremost you should do the blood test okay in the blood test the main things you're looking out for are the renal function uh, including the bicarbonate so the renal function you should have a baseline renal function from the time that they had the transplant done okay so this this may be a recent one or several years ago but there should always be a baseline renal function and what you have to do is you need to get the bloods done urgently and then look for a change since the baseline okay so if obviously uh, their renal function has declined then you need to think about whether dialysis is indicated or not okay so that's the in, uh, bloods chest x-ray is important now why would you think that chest x-ray is important in a renal transplant patient well it comes back to earlier on uh, about fluid status because if they're in pulmonary edema uh, because they are fluid overloaded then that again tells you that the transplant is possibly failing most likely okay and that they might need renal dialysis acutely hmm okay and lastly the ultrasound is for assessing patency of the blood vessels going to and from the transplant ultrasound dopplers are of course they are important but they are not necessarily a life-saving thing okay things like the renal function chest x-ray are much more important for you to know because um if it is especially overnight you're not gonna get an ultrasound doppler done all right so getting the renal function the chest x-ray examining them uh, make, making sure they are passing urine these are the crucial elements that you need to get done first okay so that was how to assess uh, whether or not 
a transplant is functioning. Now let's look at whether or not patients are having complications of immunosuppression. Immunosuppression is very good. Okay, it, 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 They do wonders for patients. They allow transplants to happen. They change people's lives. But at the same time, they come at huge possible side effects. And every single immunosuppressive medication has their own risk profile. Okay, so every common every common immunosuppressive medication will come with the risk of sepsis okay infections are just more common in immunosuppressed patients we know that this includes patients on steroids okay bone marrow, bone marrow suppression is very much a real thing so you need to monitor monitor their full blood count uh, around the time that the transplant happens and also at regular intervals followed by diabetes, which can be uncontrolled. And uh, not only that, even in patients who do not have diabetes, they can develop diabetes because of their immunosuppressive medications. And in these situations, you know, um, obviously they need to be on uh, diabetes medications. But also, uh, patients are at risk of having diabetic emergencies, like in this situation, okay? So even patients with type 2 diabetes can develop diabetic ketoacidosis. I know that we've always been told that diabetic ketoacidosis happens only in patients with type 1 diabetes, but that is not true. Ketosis-prone type 2 diabetes is very much a reality. It is very much a recognized phenomenon, and it does happen. I've seen this many times. Times. Okay, so these are some of the common, the main things that can happen with patients on immunosuppression on uh, transplants, things that you should be looking out for, okay? Medication-specific complications uh, can happen as well. So for things like uh, tacrolimus, tremors are common. So easy to remember here, top tip guys, T, tremors, tacrolimus, T. Okay, so that's quite easy to remember. Another is gum hypertrophy for cyclosporin. Uh, cyclosporin has also been known to cause something called hypertrichosis, so uh, increased proliferation plur of uh, hair growth, uh, and also hemorrhagic cystitis with uh, cyclophosphamide. Cyclophosphamide is much less commonly used now. Tacrolimus is very common, so you should definitely, definitely know this. Ta uh, tremors, okay, in uh, tra uh, tacrolimus. So in terms of who to contact, these are not easy patients to manage by any means, okay? You are going to be the medical registrar on call. You are not the ITU registrar on call, and you are not the transplant registrar on call. So you are not going to be managing everything on your own. So you need to, uh, you need to get help. OK, so even in your PACES exam, if you have a renal patient and they are asking you, OK, so what are you going to do in a patient with a failing transplant who presents to you acutely? So this is what you need to be doing. OK, any renal transplant patient coming into hospital, you need to contact the renal transplant team. You have to contact the renal transplant team. You need to talk to them, gain their advice, especially on things like concerns and advice on immunosuppression management. Do not, do not stop their immunosuppressive medications without gaining advice from the renal transplant team, okay? Because that will cause huge issues for the transplant that can cause the transplant to fail even if it wasn't failing. So don't stop it. Even if the patient is unwell, gain urgent advice from the renal transplant team. And any concerns on failing transplant, if you think that the transplant may be failing for whatever reason, you need to talk to them as well, okay? Renal team should also be uh, kept in the loop because the patient may well need acute dialysis and they need to be constantly kept in the loop with what's happening with the patient. There are some key principles of monitoring when it comes to renal transplant. The first one is tacrolimus levels in patients on tacrolimus. You can do levels for other immunosuppressive medications as well. Uh, this will just depend on what they are on and whether your specific lab can do it or not. Okay, But tacrolimus levels are commonly done and they should always be done in patients with, uh, you know, on renal transplants. Blood sugars if they are on steroids, but really if they are on any uh, immunosuppressive medications because a lot of them are known to cause hyperglycemia. Full blood count because they can have bone marrow suppression, okay? That's why it's important. 
And as I said earlier, any issues, any concerns, anything at all, discuss with the renal transplant team because transplants are very valuable both to the patient and also the renal transplant team. And any insult, any kind of concern, anything that might damage it is of relevance to all of them. Okay, That's why you need to be extremely vigilant when you are dealing with a renal transplant patient. So let's get back to the scenario then. So we have Rob, a 62-year-old man with a renal transplant on tacrolimus and prednisolone. Okay, He has come in with abdominal pains and he is tachycardic, he's tachypneic and now it looks like he has got DKA with possible sepsis. So he fulfills all the criteria for diabetic ketoacidosis uh, and so far we don't really have a clear source of sepsis yet. So what should you do? As the medical reg on call, what do you think should be the right thing to do? Here's what I think, okay? So you should treat the DKA fully, so put him on the, uh, diabetic ketoacidosis protocol. This is the fixed rate insulin regime, okay? Every hospital in the UK has got a protocol for that. It is the same, but every hospital does have it anyway. And also treat the possible sepsis, give full sepsis treatment with sepsis screen, okay? So sepsis screen is usually comprised of things like blood cultures, urine dip and um, midstream urine sample sent to the lab and a chest x-ray being done. This is all part of sepsis screening and treatment. So you should do all of that. And also get ITU team involved because they need to possibly monitor this patient for dialysis, especially if he is not passing urine. We didn't know in this scenario whether or not he was passing urine. We didn't cover that. But if he is not passing urine, if his renal function is particularly poor, then they need to be monitoring him for acute dialysis. Similarly, as I said earlier on, you need to be talking about this patient with the renal and the transplant teams because you need to talk about their uh, transplant function itself, need for dialysis, immunosuppression, um, advice on sepsis treatment, everything. Okay, So involve all these teams and give them full treatment. It is always better to over-treat these patients than under-treat. You have to be very careful with these patients, guys. So I hope you learned loads. If you are are a keen learner if you want to learn more make sure you check out my book on strategies for high achievers for paces which is out available in paperback and also kindle formats the link is in the description down below and also my course with all these loaded features all right guys i will see you in the next video